Welcome to Making Stuff with Chris Dayhut. For today's video, we're going to be taking a look at an analog uh, sound level meter, uh, or sound level sensor, I should say. We're going to make a sound level meter with that sensor. Uh, it's uh, quite a unique little device, works effectively very nicely, and uh, we're going to use some discrete components with it to create this sound meter. Uh, so this is a little departure from typically what we've been doing thus far on the channel. But it's time we spread our wings a little bit and try some other uh, devices. Now, in the past, I've done a video on using a bar graph display. Uh, so I won't go into a lot of detail on that. Um, so that's kind of the, the discrete component part of this. Uh, the rest of it's kind of straightforward. We're going to use an analog signal display uh, that in a way that we can easily understand it via this bar graph display. So before we get into it, I just want to do a quick demonstration here on the device, and then we'll go over to the fritzing diagram and see how it works. Now to replicate the sound level, I'm just going to blow on uh, the microphone for it, and that gives it a little easier way of responding and so forth. Now you'll notice one of my segments on the bar graph is burned out. Uh, I was doing a little experimenting, got a little carried away, seeing how much voltage or how much current I could run through it and kind of burn that one out. So ignore that one. Uh, but nonetheless, on our uh, device here, we've got our Pico, our bar graph display with some resistors, and then the sound level sensor. Now let's go dive in uh, first uh, here on... Uh, the Amazon uh, website, and this is where I picked it up, purchased it. Um, it was kind of an expensive device as far as these go. It was $14 for two of them, and uh, you know, that gets get you in at $7 each, uh, but uh, it did what I wanted, and it actually seems to work very nicely, so it's not the really cheap, inexpensive things that when you get it, and you try it and it don't work, and then you wonder what you did wrong, only to find out the thing was junk to begin with. Uh, so it, to me, it's well worth the money. Uh, but what it gives us is the ability to use either 3.3 volts or 5 volts to power it, run it. And it gives us an analog signal back on this envelope uh, output. Uh, there's a gate for uh, sound level detection and then an actual audio output uh, that could go into an amplifier and you could get sound, recognizable sound out of it. Uh, but this is the device, and I'll have a link for this uh, in the program source code as well. Uh, we're going to take a look at the Fritzing diagram. As you can see, uh, first we'll look at the device uh, and how it's connected. We've got a ground and a VCC. Ground is going to the ground rail and then back to uh, the Pico on a ground input. VCC is connected through the power rail and that is at 3.3 volts. The green wire is uh, what we're using for our analog output uh, from the device and that will connect to analog to digital channel number two uh, on the Pico. Uh, for our output, our graphic display, I'm using a 10 segment, I believe it's 10. Yeah, 10 segment uh, bar graph LED. And uh, we're powering it through these wires. And then on this side, we're giving it the path to ground through these 150 ohm resistors. Uh, the pin layout here uh, was ideally picked so that... Um, it would have been nice if this would have been number one and this would have been number 10, but wiring it and making it look readable didn't make sense. So we're going to take care of the ordering of these wires uh, in a, a list array that we're going to create within the program. So rather than do it the hard way in the hard way in hard wiring, we're going to do it the easy way in software so that our First pin ends up uh, controlling the bottom LED segment, and the last pin controls the upper segment. Uh, and that'll make sense here in a second. But the wiring, as you can see, is pretty straightforward. We're going to get into the program here near the top. Here's that link that I promised you on Amazon. 
uh, and Emmer talking about um, how this uh, bar graph is very fast, very responsive. We're an LCD display, which I'll be doing a separate video on, uh, utilizing the same sensor but creating a bar graph display with the LCD. You'll see the advantages in this one in that it's very fast and very responsive. Uh, but you'll have to understand more about that with that other video as well. Into the actual code, we're going to import the machine library in time, like we almost always do. Uh, this is a little different. We're going to create a list uh, called LVL, and what that is is going to represent each one of these items is going to be one of the segments on the bar graph display. So uh, we append them in this order, and that's very specific so that I get the order in which I want them to light up. Uh, for example, um, off the top of my head, I probably got it backwards in my head, but this will probably be uh, the bottom um, most segment on the bar graph, and this one will be the top most segment on the bar graph. So uh, 0 through 9 or 1 through 10, however you want to look at it, uh, increasing, uh, going up on the bar graph display. Uh, we're going to configure hardware uh, for the analog input, and that's going to be our sound analog object, and that'll be the machine analog to digital channel number two. Now we'll jump down into the main program and come back to this subroutine in a minute. Um, just giving a little delay before I start the routine here, um, and then we go into our endless loop. Uh, we're going to read the sound level by sound analog dot read. Uh, underscore 16, that's uh, reading that channel. And then we're going to call this function, passing it the sound level, the analog value. As you can see here, just sitting idle listening to me talk, it's in that 1500 to 2000 range. Okay, now moving up into our subroutine. Uh, I, if you notice something, a line that was here before called factor, uh, that was a leftover from, a, a, we'll call it an artifact of previously tested code. I've removed that. Uh, but here in the, the function, uh, as mentioned, we get the uh, sound level from the, from the reading down here, and that's passed in. The first thing we'll do is go uh, with a for loop uh, in the range of 1 to 10, iterating through all of our uh, output pins that are in that list and turning them off and then just sleeping for uh, half a millisecond uh, just to animate things a little bit. can make it more interesting sometimes. Um, while setting this all up and experimenting with it, I found that 1K of analog reading uh, was kind of the ambient level, and then 30K would have been about the peak level with me being relatively noisy and obnoxious. Uh, so I'm going to rank those as at 1K would be 10%, uh, and 30K would be 100%. And the way that would work out on the bar graph display, 10% would be the bottom uh, bar lit up, and then at 30K of sound level, we would have the very top uh, LED segment lit up, or actually all of them at that point. And then that'll give us uh, uh, the ability to rank each of the LED segments to an analog signal, and that's what we're doing here. Uh, for every percent increase, it would be 0.033, and uh, so if we take the ranking of that, or create a ranking based on the integer of that amount, uh, this amount, times 0 0.00033, we can get a ranking between 1 and 10, and in this case, we don't want to exceed 10, so that's what this line does. If rank greater than 10, rank will have to equal 10. And in this uh, loop here, we're going to go through um, the loop, and we're going to iterate through it uh, from number one all the way through rank up to the highest level. And uh, we will set which ones of these will be on. And uh, that's it. it. It just simply goes through, turns on any of the outputs 
that are below our ranking number and less. And then again, we'll sleep for a little bit to try to animate that effect. Uh, so let's go ahead. We'll take a look at it again. I'll be blowing on the microphone to make it move um, just so that I don't create obnoxious noises. And you could see it go all the way up to the maximum level. And you were probably watching here too. You could see these numbers rising and falling with that analog level. So it, it's seemingly complex because we've got a lot of components. We got 10 resistors, the bar graph display, 11 wires, uh, just that alone and all that stuff. But what it does give us is a very effective uh, bar graph display showing and representing sound level as provided by this sound uh, analog sound sensor. So it's a pretty cool device. And as I mentioned, I'm going to be doing another video using a Pico display to emulate this exact same behavior. Uh, but you'll see the advantage here versus the disadvantage on that system. And I'll demonstrate once again so that you can kind of get an understanding of how fast and responsive this is. You see that the bar graph just flies up, flies down. And that is with... Uh, here in the code, we're delaying uh, 50 milliseconds every time through this loop. So I'm forcibly slowing it down, and yet it's still very, very fast and responsive. So that's going to wrap up this video. Thanks for watching, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.